<laughs> I didn't know you were standing there, sorry. I'll get you your dinner. Hey guys, and welcome back to our off-grid cabin project. So we are getting ready to run the electric. Actually, I'm gonna run it right now. This has been a really great learning experience in trying to plan for our upcoming house build this summer. And we are also getting ready to do a Q&A session with Break Heart Orchard. They are currently building their timber frame sips house right now. You can check them out right up here or there'll be a link at the end of the video and in the video description. So if you have things that you'd like us to ask them about their build or what maybe they would tell us for our future build, put in the comments down below questions you'd like us to ask them. Also guys, really quick, take that hand of yours and click that mouse and give this video a thumbs up. It is a beautiful day. It is nice and warm. I'm really gonna try hard to kick as much of this out as possible. So let's go. So we are getting closer to putting professional grade spray foam in. We are looking at putting an inch and a half to 1.75 inches in the entire unit, minus the floor, because I don't quite have enough space. So as the last few things we have to finish up, obviously we have to finish running the wiring. We have to start running the wiring, have not started. Uh, we have to drill a couple holes for the wiring and I need to go through and finalize all of my receptacles here to make sure that they are going to be sufficient. because I am done nailing, well, nailing my hands. The boards will be, the main boards will be nailed up with an air compressor, so. It's not rocket science, it's simple logistics. You gotta go through and route everything and figure it out. It's like a brain game, right? But, the minute you get it figured out and you're like, all right, this is how it's going to get done. And someone else comes along and says, well, that'll work, but maybe there's a better way. Maybe you can do it like this and maybe that way would be better. And then you sit down and you're like, all right, trying to redraft the plan. So that's where I'm at today. I sat down, I was ready to start ripping the electric cord out of the bag and stuffing it through everything. And then Eric told me that 
there probably wasn't the best way to do it. Unfortunately, this is the part where, I hate to say it, being a girl kind of sucks because it's not something you ever grew up doing. It's not something you ever had the chance to know, to learn. It's easy to sit here and think, yeah, I can do this. I can get it done. You go to do it, but then as you're doing it, you get those little hiccups, and then all those negative comments start flowing through your head, and then you're just like, what am I doing? This isn't gonna work. I should just quit while I'm ahead. I mean, it just really sucks. And I don't usually let negative comments get to me, but you know, something like this where it's completely out of my league, it definitely hits hard. So, thanks to those of you who are leaving supportive, positive comments about me attempting to do this myself. Um, and don't worry, I will have Eric doing a lot of the electrical stuff on the actual house. And we'll have his buddy Jason there helping us um, to make sure that neither of us are messing anything up. This is a shed for all intents and purposes. It is not supposed to be up to code on certain things. So because it is less than 200 square feet, it is not technically deemed a building. So I'm not gonna be sleeping out here. No one's gonna be living in here. It is gonna be my office and down the road transition into possibly a cabin for guests to stay in. As far as the legalities and codes of that, I'll face that down the road. I am trying to make it as much up to code as reasonable. Obviously, I'm not gonna rip all the walls off and redo all the studs in here because that's just ridiculous. So, I'll sit down with my township when the time comes and say, okay, what does this qualify under and what are the legalities of it? Right now, the legalities that I'm worried about are making sure all my wiring is sufficient. So, but again, looking down the road, if I would like to try to transition this into a possible cabin, I do want to make sure I have enough receptacles. With that said, I just really, my brain just hit a standstill. It was chugging along pretty good. I was excited. And then it just, all the power shut down. It is overheated and it's like, it hasn't come back yet. So. <sighs> There's a whole pile of snow up there. This is just the start. I've got at least four more of these.
So he just needs to be able to, he has to be able to come straight to the wall and then curve up like that. So that should be plenty, maybe even a little bit too much, but that's okay, I think. <sighs> All right, so I'm gonna staple him to the wall and then cut him free. And then uh, we'll have the one up there all done. And then from here, will be a lot easier. Cause actually, this one's really short. This one's really easy. So this one goes from here and we're gonna have a short connector coming up to here, and then another short connector going from there to there. And then one short connector coming down here, and then he's gonna go through the wall around the corner, and that's it. So this is the easy one. Okay, so let me cut him free. Kiss, kiss. Whew. Okay, we got the first section done. Um, not done, just the wires run. So let's go through and splice them in and uh, connect to all the terminals and stuff. All right, let's go to the next one. You know, I gotta admit, this was really tough work. Trying to feed the electrical wire through all of the holes, run it along the line, and then push it through the panels. It was just, let me, let me just say, I'm not excited to be doing this on the house, but maybe by that point, I'll be in some pretty good shape for it.
get any of that on video. Unfortunately, that really stinks because my son was like really busting butt trying to help me out. <laughs> I really hope it's on video. Um, are we going to finish, finish that today? Finish running oh. the electric? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got two more wires. You see where this wire ran? You see where the wire ran? Mm -hmm. Say it's over there. Remember how we were feeding it up? Mom finished it off over there. Well, if it's not dogs that need to come in, it's cats. Hey, Tat. All right, well, let's get to work. I am not sure what sort of sorcery it takes to push those wires through those terminal slots. But man, that was the biggest pain in my butt, was trying to push those things through. So I think when we're doing the electric, I'm going to have Eric handle that part of the electric. Because my little hands just are not strong enough to shove those wires through. Man! This is a beast. This is a tight little area. <laughs> ah! Got him. You know, I gotta say that having Aaron in here helping with the electrical, he really enjoyed pulling those wires through. It was almost like finding his way through a maze as he searched for the hole to run the wire through and then pulled it along, pulled it along, and then it would get stuck and then I'd have to feed him some more. He really, really took to it like a pro. Even the corners, which were the trickiest areas, he was able to wiggle his little fingers into those holes to feed the wire through the next hole. So I'm really looking forward to having him help on the house build coming up. I think he'll really enjoy it. it suddenly occurred to me I don't have to run it around the side I can run it directly up and over so why the heck am I using so much wire or something that doesn't have to go that direction I guess because my mind is just grouping everything together but we're gonna run short on wire crazy enough 200 feet of wire for a 16 foot long cabin right now i have the wire going all the way around with all the other wires and then up with the other wires and then he's going to continue on his path over to here no that's doable there's nothing wrong with that but instead i could run him over to here then up 
and along the rafters and then back down to there. I'm gonna measure this quick and see which way would be better for material. I think as it is right now, I will have just enough to reach that light. But that doesn't help me because I still need wire to run from the fuse box down to the light switch. So I'm still just a little short on wire unless we happen to have some in the barn, which we might have to check. run it from the center over there up and then over to that light. It is 32 feet to run it from that point all the way around and then up to that light. So um, that would be the better way to run it. And again, like I said, it never occurred to me because I'm just trying to keep everything running on the same path. Um, I don't know how electricians do it. I don't know if it's always the path of least resistance. They've got wires going everywhere or if they just keep things on the main line and then branch off as need be. I have no idea. It doesn't matter for this project, but right now it matters because I can really use that extra chunk of wire. So the next question is, is my ladder going to reach that high? I don't know. Aaron did a great job helping me on the very last leg of the wiring job. He was even excited to do it. Now, don't tell Aaron, but um, I, I might have had to rip all of his hard work out of the wall. So I guess in the end, it kind of worked out because I had just enough leftover wiring to be able to finish up my last few connections. Alright, so I'm out here working in the shed, in my cabin. You know your dog is devoted when it's like 30 degrees outside and she's busy sitting right outside by the door. <laughs> and I've tried to get her in here, but she'd rather just sit there by the back door and make sure everything's okay back there. That's loyalty, man. That is loyalty. Electric because after today things are about to get nasty. I am so thankful that the weather has been as beautiful as it has been, although a little sad because I really kind of like to do some work with my horses in this nice weather, but hey, at least I can work in the shed. If I get a little warm, I can take my coat off and not freeze to that, like no gloves. But things are about to change in the next couple of hours. Sadly, I am not going to meet my goal. Today's Thursday. I guess I get this video tomorrow. Fingers crossed. And I had hoped to have the electrical inspector out today and the spray foam guys out tomorrow. I don't have this done yet. Anyway, we are forecasted to get anywhere from four to eight inches of snow. It's like our snowstorms keep getting bigger and bigger. It's not uncommon out here in Michigan to get eight inches of snow. It's just, we haven't had hardly any snow in the last two years. So it's good, but it's bad because 
if I don't get this sealed up with spray foam, it's gonna be full of snow inside. Oh, one more thing real quick. If you guys could do me a favor, I've got some friends that are um, first generation farmers. They had a disaster this year. They are actually bee farmers, apiary, they do an apiary. So they had this idea to send their bees to Arizona. They trucked them down there. I don't remember what kind of farm it was. It was some sort of farm where they were growing produce or something. And bees were gonna help pollinate the plants while also continuing to make honey and of course survive and they were gonna pick them up in the spring. Well, unfortunately, one of the local farmers sprayed pesticides on their crops, which killed all of their bees. Now, normally, they probably have like a one-third die-off rate over winter. This was a 100% die-off rate, so that means they have nothing to start making products. They make honey, they make uh, skincare products, uh, facial products, Ah, wow, my friend Nikki is amazing with all of her skincare products. This scents, they use natural oils, so good. So if you guys can do me a favor, don't tell them I sent you because they have no idea that I'm telling you about them. If you could go visit their online store or visit their Instagram account, give them a kind message on their Instagram account, show them some support, or if you'd like to purchase some of their amazing honey, it is so good. There will also be a link in the video description so go ahead and check them out if they ask where everyone's coming from just say you found them online don't say that I told you about them all right they don't watch my video so they're not gonna know hopefully so thank you guys so much definitely gonna have to get a drill extension to get that all the way tight Lastly, I have the Fuse Breaker Box and the Junction Box. The Fuse Breaker Box seems small because it's only a two breaker box. It has a total of 30 amps or two 15 amp breakers, which will be just enough for what I need it to do in this cabin. Now the Junction Box down below allows the power to split between the light switch terminals and the power outlet terminals. Basically, if you have a split in your wiring, you have to have it contained. So this junction box allows me to split the wire into two different paths while still maintaining power and keep it safely tucked away. I am sorry it is not gonna happen it is taking me forever to go through and strip all these wires and then I'm gonna have to go through and twist all these terminals and it's probably gonna take me at least another day so I don't want to make you guys wait a whole nother week or two for a really really long 30 minute long video so um, I'm gonna show what I've got so far and then I'll give you the final follow-up video and uh, 
um, maybe that will be with the inspector. I don't know. I'll have to see what happens when I can get them out here. But let me show you what I've got thus far. I made a pigtail. So a pigtail is just like a wire extension. So we've got our, um, our ground wire, our neutral, and then our hot wire right here. So I think I'm going to cut these guys a little bit shorter so that they're all about the same length. And then um, pretty much the coppers get screwed together. The whites and then the blacks. Yeah, my hands are getting cold. I think I'm just gonna go get a propane tank refilled so that I can get Eric's buddy heater in here and start heating this so that I can work because <laughs> I'm not gonna get any work done if it's this cold. Basically, I pretty much have taught myself a good shock. So it gives me a better, it gives me a better footing for when we start working on the house. I'll already have a really good working concept of how things are supposed to go. So it won't be quite so much that Eric has to teach me when he's already being worked pretty hard and frustrated with building a house. So um, Eric, again, doesn't know what I'm doing out here. He's just trusting me to get it done. So <laughs> don't yell at him. It's not his fault. Yeah. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I really enjoy seeing your comments. Put a comment down below. Um, let me know what you think. Also, let me know what you think about the upcoming house build. And don't forget to take a look at Breakheart Orchard and go over and see their build. They're getting ready to wire too. Love you guys. Bye.